Hi everybody, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your end of the week video for the 31st of January 2020. The first month of 2020 is now behind us. As expected, a pullback or consolidation is underway. I've been expecting minor 4 to arrive for a while and here it is. I'm expecting it now to continue through the all of next week and possibly the end of next week or maybe a little longer than that, depending on which structure it unfolds as. Support, final support's expected about 3153, that could be a bit low. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last. The Elliott Wave structure of this bull market, which began in March 2009, is seen as the simplest Elliott Wave structure, a five-wave impulse. At cycle degree, one and two are well off to the left of the chart now. Here's three, four and five. When we label 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the positions that I have them and I'm giving you those exact dates and price points so that you can re replicate this trend channel on a semi-log scale on daily and weekly charts. When we draw it using Elliott's first technique from 1 to 3 with a copy on 2, it then shows perfectly where 4 perfectly found support and this beautiful V bottom sees a strong bounce up. That tells me that 1, 2, 3 and 4 are quite likely put the labels are quite likely in the correct positions and if that's the case what that means is 5 is limited to no longer than a quality in length with 3 because in this instance 3 is shorter than 1. A core Elliott Wave rule states that 3 may not be the shortest out of 1, 3 and 5. I have seen that misinterpreted to say that 3 should be the longest. That's not what the rule states at all. The rule is clear 3 may not be the shortest. Sometimes 3 is shorter than 1, and when it is, it gives you important information. It tells you that 5 may not be longer than 3, so that 3 isn't the shortest. The limit in this instance is this price point here. And the other thing about this chart is that 5 is incomplete. When it's complete, it should look like an obvious 5-wave structure at this time frame. We can see primary 2, intermediate 2, and minor 2 at the weekly chart level, in order for the wave count to have the right look, minor 4, intermediate 4 and eventually primary 4 should also show up at the weekly chart level so that cycle 5 has an obvious 5 wave look. This is unfolding in very typical fashion for this particular market. The S&P most commonly exhibits extended third waves. It looks like a stretched out accordion and you can see the corrections like a parts of an accordion all neatly lined up, evenly lined up. Within this impulse, minor wave 4 may not move into minor wave 1 price territory below the invalidation point. When intermediate 3 is complete, then intermediate 4 may not move into intermediate 1 price territory, and when primary 3 is complete, primary 4 may not move into primary 1 price territory. And then finally, primary 5 up to the final high. I don't have targets for intermediate waves 3 and primary 3 at this stage. When minor 4 is complete, then I'll apply Fibonacci ratios within intermediate 3 to calculate a target for it. Likewise, when intermediate 4 is complete, I'll use Fibonacci ratios within primary 3 to calculate a target for it to end. Let's take a look now at the daily chart level from this high here, minor 1. This point here, here's minor 2, a zigzag, minor 3 in impulse, which slightly overshot that, overshot that really important trend channel. It did close above it, but it quite quickly returned back within the channel. Minor wave 4 is likely to exhibit alternation, but alternation is a guideline, not a rule. It's not always seen. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be seen for the Elliott wave count to meet all rules. If, altern sorry, if minor wave 4 exhibits alternation in structure, then minor wave 2 is a zigzag, and so minor wave 4 may be least likely to subdivide as a zigzag, and most likely to subdivide as one of either a flat, triangle, or combination. All of those begin with a three-wave structure for the first movement, and I'm labelling that minute wave A. Within flats, triangles, and combinations, there is a B or X wave, which is an upward swing. This is a counter, this, sorry, this is a pullback within a bull market. So the B or X wave is an upward swing within the consolidation. 
B or X waves are really complicated structures. They exhibit the greatest variety in Elliott wave structure and price behavior. They can be quick, sharp bounces for a bearish move, or they can be time consuming, sideways, choppy, overlapping consolidations. And it's absolutely impossible when they're beginning to tell which structure it may be. It's virtually impossible until sometimes they are over or even sometimes after they're over to tell with confidence which structure they unfolded as and so it's absolutely essential to be flexible when a B wave or X wave is unfolding or anticipated to begin. Now it's also possible that minor 4 may not exhibit alternation in structure with minor 2. Minor 2 is a zigzag and that's the most common corrective structure by quite a wide margin. And when second and fourth waves do not exhibit alternation in structure, then they're usually both zigzags. So it's possible we could just get a little bit more downward movement, possibly maybe to come to find support at the lower edge of the Elliott channel, and minor four could possibly end with some more downward movement sooner than expected. It could end sometime next week. That is a less likely possibility, but the problem with probability is lower probability outcomes will sometimes occur and when they do they're never what you expected was going to happen so it's the important thing to note here it is a possibility to be aware of and be prepared for minor four may not move into minor one price territory draw an Elliott channel from one to three place a copy on two look out for support at the lower edge of this channel. Also continue to look for resistance at the upper edge of this really big channel, this multi-year channel. This is the first daily chart. This is going to look at the possibility that minor wave 4 may be subdividing as a flat, triangle or combination. Within all of those, the first movement subdivides as a 3, most commonly a zigzag, and that's what could be complete now down here. It's entirely possible as well that this little fifth wave could certainly continue lower, and so I want to see a new high above this point before I have confidence that minute A or W is over. While price has not moved above the confidence point, we must allow for the possibility that this could extend lower first. When minute A or W is over, then minute B or X would be expected to begin. If minor 4 is a flat correction, it will subdivide 3, 3, 5, and minute B within it must retrace a minimum 90% the length of minute A, and I'm giving you that price point in the text article. If minor wave 4 unfolds as a combination, then the first structure may be a complete zigzag, labelled W. X has no minimum requirement, but it can make a new price extreme beyond the start of W. And then Y would most likely be a flat correction. If minor wave 4 is a triangle, we may have a zigzag for A, would be expecting a single or double zigzag for B which may make a new price extreme beyond the start of A. 40% of triangles will do that, but 60% of triangles will not. And then C, D, E in an ever-decreasing range. There are still multiple structural possibilities, virtually all of them, open still to minor wave 4, and it's impossible for me to tell you which one of those it's going to be. My analysis over the next week or so is going to focus on identifying a sustainable low for you, and I've outlined some of the things I want to see in the technical analysis section of this analysis. Alternatively, it's possible, like I said at the daily chart level, that minor 4 could be a zigzag. We could have a 5, 3, 5 structure unfolding within C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to continue, maybe to find support at the lower edge of the blue channel. 4 may not move into 1 price territory. That's where I get that confidence point for that first chart. If this chart is invalidated with new high by any amount at any time frame above this price point with cash market data that is not futures only cash if that happens then this chart would be invalidated and I'd refer to the first chart as more likely. At the weekly chart level if for the entirety of this bull market we move everything all down one degree then instead of a grand super cycle trend change coming up when the bull market completes its structure we could just be seeing a cycle degree trend change. 
followed by a relatively brief shallow bear market before the bull market resumes with strength. The first weekly chart is very, very, very bearish after the structures complete in another one or two years. This chart, not nearly so at all. I do have more bullish charts in the monthly section. Now that the month of January for 2020 is complete, it's time to again take a look at the bigger picture. This is, I think this is, yeah, I think this is March 2009. That sustainable low here at 666.76, I think. Around about there anyway. And this is the entirety of the bull market. On this bull market, I've identified using these boxes three big consolidations. A technical analysis principle is the longer price consolidates within a consolidation, the longer and stronger the resulting movement out of it will be. Here we've got another long consolidation and a long strong movement out of it. We've had quite a long strong consolidation here. We're getting movement out of it exactly as expected. Because this consolidation was quite time consuming, that technical analysis principle tells us we should be expecting a sustained long strong upward movement now we've had a confirmed upward breakout but its price will not move in a straight line there will be pullbacks sometimes multi-month little pullbacks and consolidations along the way and you can see after this consolidation ended we had a curve and a back test not just of support but a move back into the zone of prior consolidation before price moved up and away with strength. It happened again here, a curve and a back test of support. Price actually moved slightly back into this consolidation zone before with more strength moved up and away. This candlestick for January 2020 is warning that that could certainly happen again. This is a shooting star telling this is a bearish reversal pattern telling us to expect a trend change to either down or sideways it doesn't tell us which of those two directions price may take next and it also doesn't tell us how long that new trend may last it could be one month it could be several this tells us to expect a really normal curve down to test support at prior resistance which could possibly even move back into the zone of consolidation before that upward movement that was told by this consolidation continues to move up and away. I've been over this declining volume with rising price. It's particularly concerning for this bear market. It means that eventually, sorry, for this bull market, it means that eventually, as always, a bear market will follow. The question is when. When it does, it means that because of light volume, it's very thin below. An eventual bear market could fall with remarkable strength, but we're not there yet. The Elliott Wave structure still needs to complete, and the result from this big consolidation, a long, strong upward movement, still needs to complete. The bull market is still alive, and there is strength here. I will expect it to continue. There is bearish divergence between price and RSI at the monthly chart level. This is utterly hopeless as a timing tool, and sometimes it can just disappear. But with the data in hand at this stage, it tells us that there is now some weakness in this upward movement. That certainly can continue for many months. It could continue for years before the bull market ends. On balance volume with January turning downward is at support. A break below support would be a weak bearish signal. The signal would only be weak because this trend line has a reasonable upward slope. ADX is declining, the DX lines are whipsawing at the monthly chart level, there is no clear trend. ATR tends to rise when this market moves into downward movement, tends to be flat or declining when it moves up as it is now. At the weekly chart level, this week gives us a bearish long upper wick and it has support from volume, tells us to expect downward movement is quite likely next week. The downward movement has managed to bring RSI down from overbought back into neutral territory and there is this longer term bearish divergence which we see more clearly at the weekly chart level. ADX indicates an upward trend in the early stages. Still, it hasn't caught up with the fact that price has moved lower for the last couple of weeks. It is a lagging indicator here based on a 14 week average in MACD bullish. 
at the daily chart level. Friday was a particularly strong downward day, may find support about the Fibonacci 55 day moving average, if not below that here is next support 3150 to 3155 corresponds with my Elliott wave targets. ADX is declining, the DX lines are whipsawing after the upward trend here at the week, sorry, at the daily chart level reached extreme. It's now telling us that there is a normal and to be expected consolidation or pullback. ATR is increasing as price falls, normal behaviour for this market on balance volume gives us a weak bearish signal as it turns down from resistance. Stochastics is not yet oh sorry, RSI is not yet oversold, and stochastics isn't yet oversold. MACD is bearish, and so I will expect this consolidation or pullback to continue, not in a straight line. There will be bounces within it along the way. I'll expect overall downward movement maybe for another week or so before RS, RSI reaches oversold and price reaches down to support. I will be looking for a few things to identify a sustainable low in place. First of all, I'll be looking for a 90% downward day. And then, as soon as we see that, we will immediately look for the possibility of a 90% upward day following it within three sessions, or two back-to-back 80% upward days, or I will look for downward movement as RSI reaches oversold, and then we may see a bullish divergence between lows in price and lows, sorry, and lows in RSI. If we see that, that's sometimes a reasonable, fairly like reasonably consistent indicator of a sustainable low in place. And or I'll be looking for bullish candlestick reversal patterns. At this stage, none of those things are evident. This consolidation probably has another week or so to play out before it's finally over. That's all for me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all our members are having an absolutely awesome weekend.